okay, we're on. Okay, so how I do cancelling of beliefs and what are my recommendations on it? Well, the thing was when I, when I met Muji for a one-to-one -one, and he asked me, what are you beyond your thoughts? You know, and beyond my thoughts, there was like a, there's like a witnesser behind my thoughts, watching all my thoughts passing. So I said, oh, there's a witnesser behind my thoughts, which is watching all the thoughts passing. And he said, what's, 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 what, what's behind the witnesser that's witnessing the thoughts? And as soon as he said that, you know, I had a white light spiritual experience, like the whole world disappeared. And I was in, in, like in a, in a field of infinite light, love and power beyond beyond description. Nothing in this world could compare to that level of power and light. And then eventually I had a th there was a thought and I came back, but I was in ecstasy. It was like the spiritual ecstasy of what it would feel like to not be in your thinking, basically. It's like by being in all this unconscious thinking, future, past, I need to get that, what about that? If you were to let all of that go, Either you'd get into the ecstasy of the present moment, the bliss and the timeless now, of just being hyper-present with no ego, and no thinking, or you'd go off beyond this realm into, into a realm of just pure light and power. So I knew that that's the truth. When I'm in my, to the extent that I'm more in my thoughts, I go into this darker world where I start to become more limited and contracted and I start to be off into the future and the past or fantasy or obsession or this moment is not enough or I have to be thinking about something. I can't just be in the pure presence of now. So I knew that. So I know that actually when I'm feeling suffering or thinking even, because when I'm thinking I'm usually the past or the future, I'm not just in the present moment. So when I'm in thinking, then I'm disconnected from, the, from life. I'm disconnected from now. I'm disconnected from this infinite limitless love that is present here. Also, on just on a quick side note, I went to see Muji with this horrific pain of gout in my feet. And when I went into that light afterwards, there was no pain. So it's like, just by being contracted in my ego, in my thinking and, my, and all my suffering, it was like my body was going into pain. It was like I was in a dark world and I wasn't present. So I realized actually thinking is just useless. You know, I, I, I would be healed of everything. I'd be happy, joyous, and free, and attractive. So, you now when I cancel my belief, and, you know, I do A Course in Miracles here, the Course in Miracles says this world is an illusion. You know, in truth, um, in truth, you know, there, you know, when I go into my thinking, and I, when I identify with my thoughts and my body, I, I start to experience a world of fear and separation. You see, fear and separation. When I start hooking into my thoughts and my body, then the more I hook into my thoughts and my body, I start to feel more and more fear and more and more se like I'm separated from people, the world, and myself and God. The more I get hooked into I'm this body, I'm my thinking, I start to get, you know, eventually, you know, I can go off into addiction and be like compulsive around something outside of myself can fix me and go off into it obsessions around, around that thing. So it's a very dark place, my body gets contracted, I get suffocated, I get panic attacks. So, so it's like, but then when I had that spiritual experience, I know actually in truth, this world is just a reflection of me hooking into my thoughts. And the more I hook into my thoughts, the more tormented my world and my experiencing starts to be. So it's like, so actually that says, in truth there is only love and there is no separation, there's just love and oneness. It, or it's even more than that, it's timeless. There's a timeless peace, presence, love, joy and power where there is no separation, no duality, no this or that, no change can happen, no birth or death, no future or past. The, the, you could call it the source or you could call it, you know, there's, there's um, God the unmanifest and God manifest. So even prior to the world of manifestation, there's just the infinite light of God. So that's the truth. And then this is just a, you could say this is just a world of, of fear and separation, different levels of fear and separation, depending on where people are in how, how identified they are with their thinking and how much they have to be in fear-based ideas that I can't trust the universe. I have to be thinking, I have to be controlling the whole world. If I was to let go, 
then nothing would catch me. The universe wouldn't have my back. So this fear-based thing, you know, and actually my, my thing was actually if I let go, all my, all my pains in my body would go. I'd feel absolutely happy and uh, the universe would take care of me. And that's been my experience. The more I let go, the more happy I get, the more miracles happen, the more universe looks after me and I get a happy life. The more I go into my thinking control or making something in the world my higher power, something I have to get to fix me, the more suffering I go into and the darker the world becomes, the more unmanageable and contracted and dark things happen. So, so cancelling of beliefs. So when I do cancelling beliefs, I know like, for me it's like, I'll just share what it is for me. This world is a lie. It's just an illusion made up by my ego and the collective egos of all the people who are in this kind of collective darkness together. It's like, oh, there's not enough money to go around. Oh, you know, you have to make a lot of preparations or otherwise everything's going to go to pot. And there's like a, co a collective insanity of darkness. And when I sort of say it, like, I don't, I'm not going to subscribe to the hell that even though my ego subscribed to and a lot of other people in this, in duality, subscribe to all of these crazy limited ideas. There's, there's no available men or, the, you know, or is, it's not, there's not enough money, I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, I guess my we're, question, we're on. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess my question is like, how do we let, um, how do we trust the universe and kind of um, trust that organic process, right? Where we're just kind of okay in tune. But then there's that part where you also kind of have to like do your due diligence, right? And like work on things or study things or how do you decide where? For instance, I guess I can relate it to my career where I'm like, okay. How, you know, where do I let spirit, and I mean, I feel like I would let spirit do everything, but like, what am I responsible for? Like, what part am I responsible for? This is a great question. For me, like, I mean, all of life is intentionality, and everyone is at a certain vibration. You know, like some people are heavy in ego, and their intention is exter all externals, and some people are mildly spirit, have a mildly spiritual intention. And some people have a very strong spiritual intention to let go and surrender and trust the universe. So everyone is where they're at. Now, here's the thing. In terms of, I mean, relating, relating to it as a practical question, you are where you're at in how heavily identified you are with all the, like, I have to work hard, there's no money, I have to perform, I have to think a lot. So these are all different it depends where you are as to how much you believe the stuff your head tells you and society tells you. But it's like, for me, it's like, in terms of practical decisions, it's where you're at and how much are you willing to let go and trust with each choice you have to make. And with, when you have to make choices, you can make, there, there are different ways. Like if I have to make a choice, like let's say um, I have to choose a job to, to make money. It's like, well, I, I would do a lot of spiritual work to let go. Like, money is not the source of my security. A new job is not the source of my security. The future is, I mean, you know, it's like letting go and going into that vibration of absolute trust. Will, when I'm in, when I, the more I let go of the heavy thoughts and the fear, and process that out and feel the fear out and, you know, um, let the thoughts go that actually if I think about it that will give me the answer then I tune into like the realm of spirit and I get like intuitive guidance I get a hunch or it comes in a certain way which is not from my head mm -hmm. it'll go like something, something goes like you don't have to worry about anything anyway but if you're going to do anything do that one or not don't do anything like just wait around and just take you know you'll be taken care of mm -hmm. you know this kind of relaxation comes in so I, I trust that. If you're open, if you have muscle testing or kinesiology available, you can check it out. Which which job is in the interest of the highest good through muscle testing? But often, here's the thing. And um, with the research, you know, done by Dr. Hawkins, the the more you can let your vibration go to a higher level, the more you can let go of it, the universe attracts it from your vibration. So it's less, um, and so. For me, it's more like I want to let go of like ideas like money is the source of my security, a job is the source of my security, and then go to these higher vibrations. And then in terms of letting it go, and then if you have to do something, 
just go with whatever intuitively. Don't worry about it, or, or you know, God's going to create it, but just choose the one that intuitively, after you've done some spiritual work of releasing. But then you're always working on completely letting go more and more. And then eventually, it, you'll find that your spirit will take, start to take over. Like you won't really, when you've let go of an idea of money being the source of security, jobs being the source of security, you don't really care. And then you, you have a lot of intuition. And actually you perform, you perform a lot better. Because actually when you're a lot, in a lot of fear and performance and anxiety and all, all that stuff going on, actually um, you don't do. Also you'll find that as your vibration goes up, the type of career you're attracted to and that you're intuitively led to may change. Like your friends may change, your career, you know, the people you date may change. Because at lower vibrations, like I used to work in the stock market, and that was a very ego, fear-based thing. Money and status. I thought money and status were the thing that the world runs on. So I chose the job for my a low vibration. Whereas actually, if God's going to look after you, you might as well do the, the work you love to do and trust that God will, will, will provide. Because that's a dumb thing. You're like, you know, I'm going to choose something because the whole world is based on fear and money and status. So I chose a job which I hated and, uh, and uh, which was very stressful and I didn't enjoy it. But I had, I had the thing. So it's like, actually, as you let go, you find the universe does take care of you. you know? So you're, you now find that you know, the more you trust the universe, the more it takes care of you and the more you get drawn to the, to the types of careers and people you should be hanging around with. But every time you let go, you're like tested on your old belief systems. Like if I let this go, like I'm used to like stressful jobs, demanding jobs. If I let that go, would the universe provide a job I'd love doing and provide enough money? And my experience is it will. But you have to be willing to let go before before you you do that. I mean, the same thing would go with like dating, you know, it's like, uh, like if you're, you're interested to the ones who are a bit crazy. <laughs> and in addiction, you see, if you're in active addiction, you always go for the crazy ones, you see. So that one looks like, it, that one looks really attractive, but you know they're a nutcase, you see. <laughs> so you go, you go, all right, so, you know, uh, well, you know, I could let that go, but then you'll have fear, you know. I, you know, being with a nice person. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Should I trust that? <laughs> go with a nice. So you have to have, you have to challenge. You know, you have to let go. You know, like trust, and you'll be open to new vibrations. It'll say like, no, let go of the crazy ones. Go for the really nice, the nice sort of kind, like not the ones who start screaming and shouting and whatever. So I'm just making a joke out of it. I might not think about it, but. <laughs> But so, so that, that is the practical. Does that, is that the practical answer? So you just let go and you do the best you can. But your but your life is devoted to letting go more. And when you start to connect to your spirit, you don't worry. But you, you don't worry about anything. You're just going by intuitive guidance, and that will take you to to jobs and people and situations in a relaxed attitude. But on the way, you'll be tested because everything that you've held on the past will test you ferociously. It's like if you say like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna go with crazy women in it any longer, you can guarantee the universe will give you a crazy woman the next day. You know, it's like, you know <laughs> it's just the way what I mean I think the Christians call it temptation, you know, like you go, I'm gonna give up chocolates. You know, you can be sure that the next day you give up chocolates, like everyone's gonna go, Do you want a chocolate? It just, it does happen that way. It's a mystical thing. It's like to the universe, I will no longer succumb to my chocolate temptation. And then you'll find all your friends will be saying, do you want chocolate? You know, I'm sure you, want, I'm sure you don't want a chocolate. You know, and really, you should have a chocolate. It will do you good. There's lots of vitamins and antioxidants. And so you'll get that kind of stuff. So you've got to keep saying no. And then you'll have earned the new vibration. So you've said no to the, the temptation enough. And now you've earned that vibration. You go, actually, that, that healthy broccoli looks good, you see. Healthy broccoli is a metaphor. It could be like... Broccoli could be like dating, or bro there's broccoli and chocolate. Broccoli could be broccoli and chocolate for, da for broccoli dating. And chocolate. <laughs> no one offers you a piece of broccoli. You can't go on the street. Say, say Francis got me you broccoli. Know. Like the devil offers you chocolate. You know. But yeah. anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> so that the could bar. be. <laughs> <laughs> so broccoli and chocolate. So it's going to be like. Oh, no. <laughs>
<laughs> chocolate cake and broccoli, you see. So it's like you've got chocolate and, bro and, and broccoli in dating, in careers, in all kinds of areas, in health, you know. So, so just quickly, it's like, so I cancel my belief. It's like I refute that I'm going to believe this any longer. I mean, I, I say it with great power. It's like, this is the illusion. I mean, I believed it because I was mad and everyone else who believed it was mad. I'm not going to believe it 100%. So I say it with that, when I say I cancel my belief, I really believe that this is an illusion. I don't have any belief in it. And when I say I'm an infinite being, I, I experience the light. But this is also a practical thing, like blurt out whatever belief you've got in white light. So it disappears from your consciousness. You know, it's like you erased it, like it's no longer going to exist in your consciousness. So that's how I do it. I cancel my belief, say it with absolute, absolute, you know, like this is God's truth. And then when you, when you have the thing, like I cancel my belief, like I cancel my belief in gout, which is a painful foot. So um, <clears throat> I'd have the image of gout and the pain and I'd see it blot out in white light. So that's how I how I, how I do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, the, you, you know, this wonderful uh, uh, <laughs> with, with, with Muji. Yes. Um, I, I, has that happened again? No. 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 Because I'm, I'm, I'm 